Hi folks, hope you're doing well today. It's 11.45pm on the 29th of the 5th, 2020. Yeah, I just had a realisation of one of the biggest problems with the police and the reason why things aren't working as they should. It's quite a simple point. The police are supposed to be public servants. Now, the whole point of a servant is you're you're supposed to be below those that you serve. If any levels are important, you're supposed to be below that person, not above them. The problem is the police believe they're above the rest of us. They act and believe as if they're above the rest of us. Now, you can't serve the public if you think they're beneath you. And that, to me, is one of the most important factors, is that the police have got to be corrected in the sense of what their job is. Or at least the public should be made aware that maybe their job has changed. Maybe they're no longer public servants. Maybe that isn't their their job anymore. Maybe their job is to serve the government or the local government. The whims of whatever leader there is. Or local leader. If that's the case, then... We have a new relationship, don't we? We have a different relationship. We have a relationship where we understand that, yeah, generally speaking, you can't trust the police. If they're there to serve the government or, you know, that person in the government who's supposed to be in charge of them, then you don't know that individual. Can you trust that politician that's in charge of the police? If the answer is no, then you can't really trust the police, can you? Not if their job is to serve that person or to do the will of that person or the government. You know one thing. In Russia, even as a visitor to Russia, you can't trust the police. So it's in China. You can't trust the police. They are state police police forces. They serve the state. That's their job. They're not public servants. They're not there to serve the community. They're there to serve the state. Do the will of the state. And you know as a citizen, even as someone visiting, you do not want to get on the wrong side of these people. That is bad news if one comes towards you and looks like they want to talk to you yeah yeah there's going to be some brown messes in your underwear and understandably so because to be concerned if this happens you'd be rightly concerned so who are they serving if they're serving the community, the public, but then they've got to realise that they are way more elevated than where they should be. They've got to come down a peg or two. At least a peg or two, if not 27 pegs. They've got to make it crystal flipping clear that the people matter more than the police officers. So when you have bad police officers, the good ones should be trying to get rid of those bad ones. They should see it as their... I was not going to say, oh, there's a word that was in my head, it's gone now. Um, 
Community service. It's not their community service. You know? If you're a good police officer and you see a bad one that's that's really making people think that you're all bad, then your service to the community should be to try and get rid of this officer. Try and make sure that evidence is got to them make sure this person leaves the police force. It can no longer be an issue. And if it's a case where 70% are bad, then you get rid of 70%. You start again with the 30% that are good. Build around that. Tricky thing is, is that we live in a system at the moment where the police seem to, their first priority is to serve the police. That's their first priority. Is their job is to serve each other. Because if one of them is accused, they all seem to come in and support each other. And we know, generally speaking, if a police officer breaks a law in a similar way to a citizen, a dude who's not a police officer, to say they get preferential treatment is an understatement of fact, massively. They won't go into the same prisons as the rest of us would do. But again, why? They are a public servant. They've been trained to do a job very, very highly. There's an understanding between them and their bosses and the community. They are there to serve the people, to serve the law. So that's why they are not the law. Their job is to serve the law. But this is where, again, the confusion is. They think they're the law, or they think they should serve themselves. So therefore, if they're serving the law and they're serving themselves first, then they, therefore, must be the law. Or if they think they're the law, then, of course, they are serving the law because of the fact that they're serving themselves. And they are the most important people within the police force. If one of them is in trouble in any way, shape or form, then all the rest will come to help. If one of them gets turned in as being a bad cop, you'll find the person who turned them in will be in big trouble in most police forces. That person will be shunned. At best, if not hounded, quite often hounding is a very common thing. You know, police will abuse their positions and their authorities and the things available to them to hound a police officer, you know, to send them death threats and to you know, have people you know, check up on them uh, using police computers and to just harass those people out of the police if possible because they themselves have stood up and said that police officer over there is a bad officer yeah the public would be better protected if that person wasn't serving and of course all the rest should stand up and say well done fantastic According to your training, you're doing your job. Then again, as I said the other day, maybe the training has changed. Maybe they're not trained to serve and protect because that's what we always believed that the police were trained to be, especially those in America because they make a big point about them. Their job is to serve and protect. Serve and protect whom? Because again, let's get out of this understanding that the police in America only abuse black black people, you know, brown skinned. That they don't abuse poor pink skinned people because they most certainly do. Absolutely. It's just that 
people in general are less likely to video such a thing. And the news networks aren't really that interested in the police police officers abusing a white person, a white man. Even if you had the video of police officers abusing a white woman, generally speaking, news agencies wouldn't want that. They wouldn't want it because of the colour of the skin. This person's too pink. Not brown enough. Yeah, this person was brown, no matter male or female, we're showing. Because that those are the talking points right now. We can make it police 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 brutality. If we can't make it race, we can make it police brutality. But we're gonna aim for the race card. Because that's the most interesting card we can play if we want viewers that's why you get all these situations reported because that's what gets viewers and that's all they care about so please yeah if they are brutal in their ways they'd be brutal against anyone they can be brutal against they're not going to pick and choose who they're going to be most brutal against in any way shape or form I mean, you just look at most officers and like, Jesus. How on earth did this person get a job as a police officer? Yeah, you look at their, their mannerisms, their actions. I mean, you have video upon video upon video online of, yeah, bad police officers being recorded, you know, doing the job. And you have to question how on earth have these people got through the training? Yeah, it's a pretty bad situation with regards to the training of police officers when you see some of them that they put through. How on earth can you put these people through? How did they get past any decent checklists to see is this person a psychopath? Is this person a bully? Yeah, does this person have a massive ego? Yeah, why is this person interested in being a police officer? Watch them while they're doing the training. Observe them. If they seem to be a bit of a psycho, then kick them out. The problem is they don't seem to have done it. No. Crazy, isn't it, really? Yeah. Oh, there's a funny thing earlier I saw. Interesting point, actually. Um, I mentioned a chap the other day, View. Uh, his name. Nice fella, American man. He does some rather interesting videos. He was doing one earlier about uh, Trump and his Twitter situation. Um, and he said, he said Twitter has basically said to Trump, behave yourself. Because Trump's been doing all this. Oh, but I'm the president. You can't. You can't say, I can't say this. You can't say that my tweets can be blocked or rejected because of fake, because I'm the president of the United States. What I say goes. If I say you can't do it, you can't do it. And Twitter basically said, okay, they did it. Yeah, they, they, they blocked one of his, or, you know, flagged up one of his messages. And this view was saying, he said, the thing of it is, he said, Trump can't leave Twitter. He can't stop tweeting because his fan base, that's why they're connected with him through the stuff he says on there. If he didn't do that anymore, he would lose most of his fan base. He would lose the next election. So there you go, folks. Start praying that, uh, 
somehow Twitter and Trump have a massive fallen out. Or that Trump somehow can't use Twitter. That maybe there be a um, a problem with Twitter for this month or so. Well, actually, you're looking at November, so you're looking for the next five months. It's five to six months that there'll be no Twitter. For anyone, I don't care. I'd, I'd quite happily not have Twitter in any way, shape or form if it meant Trump lost the next election. Very dearly. Got that one of my doggies out, Molly. She's done another body, but... <laughs> She's a stinker. She is one. <laughs> She's a stinker, this one. She's lying there with her head away from me and her butt facing me, doing body burps. She stinks. <laughs> anyway, that's about it for this one. I say, um, yeah, who do they serve? The police. Do they serve the community? Are they public servants? Or do they serve government or themselves? Because that's the way you know whether you can trust them. If they serve the community, if they serve the public, well then, yeah, you can trust them. Because they understand what their job is. They understand their job is to serve and protect you. But if they're serving themselves or they're serving the government, well then, you can't trust them. Because you can't, you can't trust who they're serving. You're not a part of that. You, you know, although we may have an election and stuff like that, you don't really get to change that much, because you vote for the leader. For example, in the UK, we vote for the prime minister, and we vote for the leading candidate on the other side. In America, they vote for the leading. Republican or Democrat. Now the problem is the person who's then going to be running the police, you don't vote for. You don't know what psychopath they're going to actually put in place. Now you can hope that they put someone decent in place. Generally speaking, I certainly think over the past 30, 40 years, there's been a lot of wrong moves going on. I mean, let's, let's be honest. The police in the 60s and 70s, certainly in America, were probably worse than what they are now. In many ways. I think they were a lot worse than what they are now. I mean, they, they were certainly people that served local government. I mean, again, that's the American system. The American system is ridiculous where you have police chiefs all over. Every state has its own police chief and they basically run their own division. And if they're corrupt, the whole thing is corrupt. And certainly in the 60s and 70s, there was an awful lot of corruption involved. Now, there's probably less now. But the problem is, is if the mannerism and if the ways of the people at the top are even similar in any way, shape or form to the ideals of Trump. And then that explains why we have police forces that still think it's okay to kneel on somebody's neck for a good half an hour. Yeah, I mean, that is inc incredible. That is crazy. You do that for half an hour, it's just madness. And then I saw another video of that and it looked from the other video that uh, the victim died actually while the officer's knee was on his neck. Because there were standard people standing by saying, check his pulse. He looks in a really, really bad way, check his pulse. Now, they wouldn't be saying that if he was still talking. So their video where people were saying that and the man on the floor with the officer on his neck, wasn't moving, wasn't saying anything. Eyes weren't open. Well, the officer has been arrested and charged basically with third degree murder. And yeah, that's not going to appease most people. 
because the maximum sentence for that, if you've had a lot of offences beforehand, is 25 years. If it's your first offence, then it'd be far less. And apparently this police officer had a lot of complaints against him, but as that uh, view chap said, it's unlikely that that would be allowed to be mentioned in court. Well, again, that is ridiculous. If you talk about the police being treated better than us, God. If I have previous in violence and then I kill somebody, I'm pretty flipping sure that a judge is going to allow any history of violence to be brought up in the case against me. Because it's background information, isn't it? It's saying this is the person's personality, this is the person's history. Yeah, this is who this person is. Now, you should be able to put that, especially if you've got a police officer who's been accused of killing somebody by the way they did things. I mean, you know, that view chap said, you know, there's quite likely going to be a motive found for this officer doing what he did because what he did was extreme violence against a man so had they had a previous running before these two people was there a reason for this police officer to hate this man apart from the color of his skin was there a reason don't know but it's quite possible we'll find out that there is. And it's quite possible that even now that the uh, the charge will be changed before the person goes to court. And this could all change once new evidence comes to light anyway. But, you know, the tricky thing with regards to all these situations is What you want is for the officer to repent because that's the best thing that can happen to everyone. Um, a long prison sentence for an elderly officer. It wasn't that, that young, the officer. If he gets 20 years, then he might be out in 10, so he'd probably be late 40s, early 50s when he gets out. He'd have no career, so his life would be over. So what would be the point in a long sentence? If he's found guilty, he loses his position as a police officer. He will lose his pension. Or at least, yeah. He wouldn't get a full pension based on that, would he? You make it some, I don't know how that works, how that system. I mean, is it fair for him to lose a full pension because he's done some years of police work where he hasn't killed people? So... So that's where it's tricky. It's not a it's not an easy thing to look at and say this is what it should be done. We don't know. Because um, if you're talking about for the victims, there's nothing you can do. I mean, for the man who's dead, you can't do anything that's going to help him out. He's dead. Uh, for the family, nothing you can do to make it better for them because you can't bring him back or whatever you do. So, with that being the case, yeah, I hope they don't sentence him based on what they hope would stop people protesting. It would please the public, because that's not a good precedent to get involved in. So, I hope in this situation that yeah, this is a catalyst that will actually bring change. And help people to focus on what needs to be done to bring change. Because change is needed. Yeah, you really do need change now. It's, yeah, there's, there are some good police officers out there. 
and they need support, all the support they can get. And there are some bad ones and they need to be got out. Yeah, people, whether they're pink or brown, need to be protected from the bad officers. And the good officers need to be protected from the bad ones as well. But the good officers need to stand up and be heard. They need to stand up and they need to be brave and they need to do whatever they can to clean up house. It's their house, it's dirty. Anyone who abuses an officer for speaking out against a bad one should be sacked. Simple. They should lose their job as a police officer, whatever, whatever level they're on. They should lose their job because of it. Because it's not right. You know? If you want the public to respect the police, then you've got to behave in a respectable manner. Simple. Right, that will do, folks. I will have to take the puppies out again now for their bedtime walk. And I will speak to you tomorrow. Now, as I'm taking the dogs out, it will be a bit later when I do the video, uh, when the video goes onto YouTube. That is always the case. It takes a while to do. And when you're struggling 12 o'clock, I said it's I started on the 29th, but it's finished on the 30th. So it will be done or put on YouTube on the 30th. Very soon. So don't worry. You take care. God bless. And I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.